So it's beautiful in Laravel and it, it's easy. So let's go to transactions table, transactions model. We are trying to tell the transaction that hey, uh, this way you are related by default. Laravel uh, goes to look for the user ID field, this ID, user ID field, and uses it to go and search for the user in the user table. But uh, according to our organization here, the way we organized our platform, in as much as we had user ID, we also had QR code owner ID. Look at it in the database. We have user ID, but also, let me click on structure. We have um, user ID, then, oh, wrong table, wrong table. So we're supposed to be in the transactions. So in the transactions, you see that we have QR code owner ID in as much as we have users. So by default, Laravel looks for this this field and uses it. But we want also to use this in a different table, uh, in a different query. So we're going to copy this and say duplicate. Find the QR code owner. QR code creator. So we're going to call this uh, QR code owner. Or create or whatever since we're using owner let's use it okay cool now we can um specify here that the foreign key we are looking for is qr code owner id that's the foreign key it should use to get retrieve this because that is what we have here instead of using this default so whenever we call this function the laravel is going to use this all right so let's copy this and get to our show blade where we want to this is inside transactions show fields where we're trying to display this qr code on our id and then um, that's what we're going to do here qr code owner now we're going to do name just to be sure that it works so we call that function and we pass the name all right so let us be sure that it works uh, where is it? QR code owner name. So we should see a name here if everything works perfectly. Perfecto. Perfecto. You see, so you can keep telling Laravel, depending on how many fields you have, you can keep telling Laravel how each table is related to the other and it will be able to just go do the query by yourself. You don't have to write no SQL at all. Zero SQL. All right. So now we're dealing with this. Uh, you know that these are names, so we should make it a link so that when somebody clicks on it, it points straight up to um, the user's profile. All right. So we're going to get back, and um, here we're going to make this a, a link. So let's make it a href equal to. So it's going to use us. I'm not coming what up with distance from the, uh, the sky it's not just falling on me uh, like here i use qr codes i've used slash users here it's coming from the web.php file if you go to route web.php so you have um routes you see all these names that's what i'm using so we used qr codes before now we're using users that's why it works all right so i'm gonna close it again and we're back users slash one slash the user id so i'll do slash copy this the user id call it id id perfect work so we'll close the a hit enter and um, here i'll hit enter and close it a and we're good we'll do the same thing for the qr code owner name just put an a here a href and um, We'll do slash users it's pointing to the user profile slash slash um this um first let me close this this let's enter enter good so now we can do paste it here slash um, id it works perfectly so when the user clicks on this it will go to this person's id beautiful and um, there we are. Reload. We should see these two as links now. You see, they are now links. Beautiful. So anybody can click this and go to the user's profile. If I click on this, see what will happen. It brings me to the user profile, you see. And then we can go back. Beautiful. Beautiful. Payment successful. Amount. 
I think looking at the transaction, the amount should be somewhere at the top, just right under product name, just to be arranged properly. So if we scroll down, we'll see amount. We'll copy that. And um, up here, we'll put paste. So transaction amount, remember, it has to have a dollar sign. Then we'll refresh, it should be somewhere here. Good, beautiful amount. And um, created that. So remember how we managed the time before. So on created that, on created that, we have to make it format. And then formats, I can do, uh, there are different time formats. Month, year. There are different types of formats. You can even put R on it if you want it to show the R. The load, keep your eye. You see, shows the R by 3 p.m. so I think our minutes so if you google time formats uh, you will see it so it shows that this is on Thursday 7 June and by 3 in the afternoon 14 minutes after 3 that's just what it shows then we can do updates the last updated is like like the last time the user tried to process this transaction so I think we should just copy this the reason I'm showing time is because uh, this is a transaction notification or uh, transaction record. So we should know the exact time, not just the day. Reload. And that's beautiful. Really? Why do we have this? Because I made a mistake. Okay, I duplicated it. So the last thing we have to do is to remove this back button. We don't need it. You can leave yours, but I don't think we really need it since we already have transactions table here. So I'm going to remove it. It's from show. At the bottom here, that's this the link here. So I'll delete it perfect go back refresh reload and we're good beautiful beautiful all right so see you in the next video